Welcome to the YMCA of Greater Providence fourth annual Why Heroes event. We are pleased to honor several members of our community today for their contributions to the Greater Providence YMCA. During the event, we invite you to support the YMCA and the communities that we serve by visiting our, our giving page at ymcaheroes.org or texting YHEROES to 41444. Today's event is hosted by Mike Montecavo. Mike is an award-winning Emmy-nominated journalist and co-anchor of newscasts on WPRI 12 Fox Providence. Thank you for tuning in and we hope that you enjoy the show. Hello, my name is Kobe Dennis and I'm the Director of Diversity, Equity and Inclusion here at the Greater Providence YMCA. Over the past year, we have experienced many trials and tribulations throughout, just like many of you. What we tried to do here is remain focused on service, service to community. Uh, we had food programs where we served hot meals to senior citizens. We had other food programs where we delivered food packages to families in need. We had uh, distance learning uh, aid packets where we delivered copies and copy papers to uh, parents working at home, also students doing work from home. So it was a collective effort uh, with community partners as well. Part of my job here over the last year has been to try and diversify the workforce here at the uh, Greater YMCA and beyond through increasing uh, membership of people of color, through uh, hiring practices, uh, offering different programs. We've been trying to diversify the staff and members here at the Greater Province YMCA. So equity has been thrown around a lot here in this last year, but we wanted to show the community that we were living what we were saying. We were talking the talk and walking the walk. So some of the things that we did was put out a message post George Floyd. We put out a message to the people, letting folks know that we'll be here for questions. And if folks wanted to come here and have meetings, community meetings, uh, a lot of YMCA members were at the rallies. Uh, we participated directly and indirectly. We also wanted to make sure we took care of our staff. So we started our own monthly uh, equity meetings, which we discussed current events. So whether it was George Floyd or anything that was going on uh, from politics to parenting, we would talk about it with our staff to make sure everyone was in a great place. We are learning that it is our responsibility. It is on us to continue to put out the message of hope. I think when people come into the doors of the YMCA, they're looking for people to talk to. They're looking for some comfort in words. And I think the Y has provided that. So in years to come, we will continue to do that through our training, through staying knowledgeable about what is going on in the communities around us. So now that I told you a little bit about what we've done over the past year, I'd like to turn it over to the CEO of the Greater Providence YMCA, Mr. Stephen O'Donnell. Welcome to the Greater Providence YMCA, YMCA Heroes event. This year, our event is virtual. So the heroes that you're going to meet today that we're going to honor have done something significant in their lives to impact YMCA historically, either being active board members or things that they've done from philanthropic efforts to fixing buildings, to cleaning things, or really just being pure leaders and sharing the mission of what the YMCA of Greater Providence is all about. I'd like to welcome our keynote speaker, the Honorable Senator Jack Reed, I'd also like to recognize Mike Monticavo as our MC and also our committee, our honorary committee of elected officials that are here with us today. And last but not least, the most important people is the people we serve and those that are attending this event with us today and our members. For the past year, since last March, when COVID descended upon our community, the doors closed. Not much choice with that. So what we did during that time period, we believe is epic. With some of the heroes that are, we're mentioning today, they stepped forward in a time of need where we delivered food, we delivered hope, not just to people that we serve, but also our staff. So the why is much more than the gym and swim that everybody talks about. Certainly we have swim facilities, gym facilities. That's not all we do. We're all about the community, making it better for those that really can't afford it. So how can you help the Greater Province YMCA? You can donate. That money that you spent, 100% of that money goes back to some type of program. It might build a field. It might fix a basketball hoop. It might pay for someone that's a staff member. And keep that in mind, too, that our staff is super, super dedicated to what we do. So the men and women, boys and girls that work in the Y structure need your help. Please donate today to invest in your community. Donate. 
thank you for joining us on this Cinco de Mayo. My name is Mike Montecalvo from WPRI 12, Fox Providence, and a proud board member of the YMCA of Greater Providence. Cinco de Mayo, you think the weather would be great, a little gloomy outside, but I guarantee you over the next hour, we're going to put a smile on your face, not just for the Y heroes that we're honoring today that have meant so much for the YMCA all these years, and not just the Y, but the community in general, but all the programs that are taking place in the Y. You heard Colonel O'Donnell just say a minute ago, it's not about swimming and exercising. That's a part of the YMCA, but it's about being in the community. Remember, we all had to pivot over the last year or so. We all had to change and do things differently. YMCA did that too. They were delivering food. They were delivering toys and transportation. So you're going to see a lot of that coming up. And you're also going to see about camp opportunities. Think about it. There are so many kids that have never been able to play in the woods or go to camp before. Over the next hour, we're going to show you how you can possibly make that happen for some kids, not just in Providence and Pawtucket, but the entire state of Rhode Island. By the way, this first uh, virtual event is brought to you by our elite sponsor, the Laborers International Union of North America, and with support from our presenting sponsors, Twin River Casino and the Valleys Corporation and the New England Laborers Tri Fund. Now, the Why Heroes event, if you've been with us before at the Rhode Island Convention Center, I think the last time we almost had 900 people. We couldn't get together, but we're looking forward to maybe next year getting together at the Convention Center and having another event to show what we do here at the Y. You know, there's so many celebrated uh, people that we've uh, honored over the years. Olympic swimmer Elizabeth Beisel just won. Also former boxing champ Gary Tiger Valletta, who has a great story about what the YMCA has meant to him. And of course, the founders of Ocean State Job Lot, Ellen Colas and Gloria Hall. And that's just to name a few people that we have honored in the past. I'd like to introduce you to our keynote speaker. He has been a big part of the success of the YMCA. He's here now to say a few words, Rhode Island Senator Jack Reed. Happy Cinco de Mayo. Today is a great day to celebrate and thank the 2021 Y Heroes. First, I want to thank our everyday heroes, Steve O'Donnell and the Greater Providence YMCA family for all they do to keep Rhode Islanders healthy, in spirit, in mind, and in body. This year's Y Heroes represent the best of Rhode Island. They have paid it forward to expand opportunities, to build community, to stand for justice. Arvin Sabatoni has created opportunities for generations of Rhode Islanders to pursue successful careers in the building trades. He has mobilized that skill and talent and service to, to improving Y facilities and programs. Indeed, he's an old friend. We played football together at LaSalle and he was just as decent and just as dedicated then. Lori White has brought her business acumen honed at the Providence Chamber of Commerce to build a Y that is fully accessible to the city residents. The Cardi family, Pete, Ron, and their late brother Nick have continued to be steadfast and generous supporters of the Y's work. They have been instrumental in getting the word out about programs and assistance available for those in need. Kathy Andriosi responded to a traumatic life-altering event for her family by establishing a foundation to assist others. Her generosity has expanded opportunities for physical exercise for people with mobility challenges at the Y. The late Mike Van Leesten, a Rhode Island civil rights giant, was also a champion for the Y, and he made sure that people could get to the Y. The late Dr. William Bundy, in addition to his distinguished naval and academic careers, mentored countless young people at the Y and spurred a boom in lacrosse playing for young people in the city. The 2021 Y heroes are an inspiration to us all. We owe them and their families a debt of gratitude. Thank you to them and all of the Y supporters. 
and we'd like to thank Senator Jack Reed. It's a busy day for the Senator. Thanks for taking out some time. As you know, Vice President Kamala Harris and Commerce Secretary Gina Raimondo are in the state of Rhode Island. So I know the uh, Senator is gonna spend some time with them. Also bringing greetings to us is Rhode Island Senator Sheldon Whitehouse to say a few words of what the YMCA and our honorees mean to the state. Senator. So congratulations to Steve O'Donnell and the YMCA for your 2021 Y Heroes event. I gotta say, a lot of your Y Heroes are my heroes too. I've admired Armin Sabatoni and his national leadership in the labor movement for a long time. Lori White has been a terrific leader of the Greater Providence Chamber of Commerce, which I think is wonderful, unlike the US Chamber of Commerce. Um, I have long been a big fan of Nairo P, Nick, Ron, and Pete. It's sad that we lost Nick, but Pete and Ron are continuing a wonderful tradition of generosity through Cardi Furniture. Uh, Kathy Andreozzi and the work she's done for her daughter Tori and the Tori Lynn Andreozzi Foundation is just amazing. And then uh, in addition to Nick, we have two other uh, folks who have gone on, but who very much merit this recognition. I have long loved Mike Leaston and worked with Will Bundy when he was director of transportation and admired him immensely. So you chose well with Mike and Will. Thank you all for remembering these wonderful individuals and honoring those who are still working hard with us. Thank you, Senator. I know they mean a lot to you and I know it's a busy day for you too. So thank you for spending some time with us on this Wednesday. Before we introduce you to our heroes, we wanna thank some of today's platinum sponsors, Amica Insurance, Excavators Union Local 731, the Tory Lynn Andreozzi Foundation, and Green Development. We thank them for their support. We're about to get ready now to start our honorees. And we're gonna start with Armin Sabatoni. You heard both senators talk about Armin and the Colonel as well. He is a second generation laborer and a 51 year member of the Laborers Local 271. He is General Secretary Treasurer and the New England Regional Manager for the Laborers International Union of North America. Under Armin's leadership, the union has instituted apprenticeship and training programs designed to advance laborers' careers and meet the needs of the ever-expanding construction industry. He co-founded the nation's first union-sponsored construction charter school for high school students and the New England Laborers in Cranston Public Schools Construction and Career Academy, which teaches high school students about the construction industry and opens doors for job opportunities upon graduation. He also created a new construction craft laborer program that's designed for vocational schools. Armand has been an incredible sponsor for the YMCA of Greater Providence for many years. He's been instrumental here at this Kent County facility. It looks so beautiful. The branches and got a new basketball court that he helped put in this summer and some safe outdoor space to hold fitness classes. That's just two of the examples that has his footprint on the greater providence of YMCA. It is our pleasure to introduce you to our first Y hero, Armin Sabatoni. Hi, I'm Amin Sabatoni. I am the General Secretary Treasurer of the Labor's International Union in North America. Uh, I am here to accept the Y Heroes Award on behalf of the members of the Labor's International Union of North America. Investing in people is what we do uh, in the Labor's International with our membership, and that's what you all do. Uh, at the YMCA, you you invest in uh, people and communities, and what's better than that? A core good community uh, makes up a good city, and that makes up a great state. We were proud to help out uh, with that project at the Kent County, the Colonel, uh, which, by the way, is a very dear friend of mine and a great man and a great public servant. He had asked uh, uh, that it looked like the quality of the basketball courts uh, there, as well as the tennis courts uh, were in disrepair. And we utilized uh, some of our young men and women in our pre-apprentice program uh, at the charter school uh, that we had developed over the years uh, to give their time and effort 
in coordination with our contractors and we were happy to repair the basketball courts uh, and the tennis courts uh, so the young men and women that participate in the good programs at the Y were able to continue uh, so it was a win-win for both of us. This year, uh, we made a special donation to the Y because we realized uh, what was happening with the uh, COVID-19. We helped uh, erect the outdoor tent. We volunteered our time uh, besides giving money. You know, that tent was uh, you know, and labor and love for us to come up with a co-sponsor money. We just thought it was really important uh, to be able to still give back. Well, first of all, I'm humbled to be chosen as a YMCA hero. Uh, never did I ever think uh, back when I was taking my first shots and my first dribbles uh, back when I was uh, 11, 12 and 13 years old uh, that I would bestow this honor. But the one million or so men and women of the Labor's International Union have placed me in this position and placed me in a position to do hopefully good things for them, good things for my community, uh, good things for members and young men and women of the YMCA. And so I would urge everyone to participate in any way that they can, uh, whether in kind or donations, the community of the Y uh, inspires us each and every day. It's such a good cause. Congratulations, Almond. Side note, just coming in today to get ready for this uh, Why Heroes event, a woman stopped me and she was glowing about the Kent County Why, talking about how beautiful it was. Her entire family comes here. She exercises, her grandkids play basketball and they play tennis too, so no refurbishing the YMCA is going a long way. Our next honorees really need no introduction. Nick, Ron, and Pete Carty. They're third generation owners of Carty's Furniture and Mattresses, Rhode Island Design Center, and Ashley Home Stores and Retail Showrooms. They have locations in Rhode Island, Massachusetts, and New Hampshire. The Carty's have been a longtime champion of the Greater Providence YMCA, and during the pandemic, they were really instrumental in assisting and distributing food and toys to those in need, including bicycles. It is an honor to bring up their names, Nick, Ron, and Pete. Congratulations. Hi, we're Nairobi, Ron and Pete Cardi from Cardi's Furniture and Mattresses. We're here to talk about the YMCA and all the involvement that we've had over the years and also to hopefully get you to get involved too. Well, you know, being involved with Steve O'Donnell and a lot of other things, he obviously calls you and, and encourages you to participate, number one. Uh, no, no, Is that what it's called? That's, yeah, I, I, that's the most polite way for me to put okay. it. Uh, but number two, um, all kidding aside, is that they just do a phenomenal job here. So the reality of it is that you see how involved they are in the community, and once they're involved in the community, which is really what we're all about, how can you not be involved? Yeah, you never think of the why for delivering food. And we had our trucks because we couldn't deliver, you know, for a couple of weeks we were shut down completely. So we had our trucks over there with Kobe and the team delivering food, but we'd also bring books to people that were bringing, hey, food, let's get some, some books and uh, sometimes clothing and what have you. And if you were thinking of the why, you know, a couple of years ago, you never thought of that. People should donate to the Y because they can see where the money's going. So whether you're down in South County, whether you're in the city in Providence, whether you're on the east side, wherever you are, you can be touched by the Y. And you have been, if you just, even if you don't remember. Think about what your kids went through. Think about, you know, learning how to swim and all the things that happen. These things happen for a reason. There's a group behind it to make it happen. And we all need to be part of that to give them some money so that they can continue. Being named the Y Hero is a humbling experience. Uh, it's something that uh, we're honored by, but humbled by. It's, it's something you certainly don't look for or expect. 
When we've seen uh, heroes of the past go through, we say, gee, do we really you know, deserve this? And uh, it's really about our team. We're very fortunate we work with a great group. So it you know, takes a village, you know, whatever you know, term you want to use, but it's a group effort you know, on our side. And it's great when you're working with a group like the Y, because now when you bring all these people together, it's amazing what you can get done. Ron, we know exactly what you mean. When the Colonel calls, you pick up the phone. So congratulations and thank you very much. And by the way, thank you for all the support, not just the billboards along the highways, but the roadshow appearances on WPRI 12. We appreciate it. And before we go further, just a note on Nick. Obviously he passed away, but he's always in our hearts. The thing I remember about Nick Cardi the most was every time you met him or every time you saw him, first thing out of his mouth was he wanted to know how your family was. So know Nick that you are not forgotten and you'll always be in our hearts. So congratulations to Nairobi. We want to say thank you again to our sponsors, the Laborers New England Regional Organizing Fund, the Laborers New York State Organizing Fund, and the Thomas C. Slater Compassion Center. I want to remind you that the Why Heroes event is our largest fundraiser of the year, and we're hoping those of you who are watching today will make a contribution. We know these are tough times. People are out of work. Prices are going up. Everyone looking for some help. Know that your money is going to stay right here in the state of Rhode Island and support all of the locations. So if you could make a donation, we'd really appreciate it. Thank you very much. And please consider a donation. You can look on our website and you can see on the screen on where you can make that donation. Our next Y hero is being honored posthumously. Michael Mike Van Leesten was a father of six a civil rights activist who joined Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s Southern Christian Leadership Conference efforts to promote voter registration in the South and the passage of the Voting Rights Act of 1965. Mike was a business leader who founded numerous organizations to help advance the underserved populations and economic change event. An agent, a lifelong resident of Providence, Mike was a founding member of the executive director of the Opportunities Industrialization Center of Rhode Island created Omni Development, which provided affordable housing and Opportunities Development Corporation, a minority owned entity, which acquired Peerless Precision Incorporated back in 1980. Mike, by the way, was also a basketball star. He played at Rhode Island College where he holds the title of the fourth leading scorer over 1900 career points. And he holds the all time record for rebounds at 1,494 boards. He was inducted into the Rick Athletic Hall of Fame in 1989 and deservedly in 2001, the Rhode Island Heritage Hall of Fame. Mike served as Director of Planning and Development for the City of Providence, and the first black director at Industrial National Bank. In 2019, Mike passed away at the age of 80. He was a strong advocate for racial equality throughout his entire life. Michael was instrumental in driving people to the former Y, which is now the Crossroads building, as you can see off 95, and advocated for Y programs and services. We miss you, Mike. His daughter, Jill, is accepting the award on his behalf. My name is Jill Van Leeson, and I'm here on behalf of my father, Michael Smith Van Leeson, to be a recipient of the Y Hero Award. Dad, um, he was an incredible human being. He was so caring, um, so courageous, and uh, he was a busy man, as we are finding out. We always knew he was busy, but didn't realize he was that busy because he was able to come home for dinner. He would share with us in regards to what he did and what he went through around the civil rights movement when he was in um, Atlanta and Alabama. Um, and it was truly about just um, civil rights as far as the rights of people, families, and individuals. So for him to uh, work within the civil rights movement, making sure that people have their basic needs, that definitely was in alignment with what the YMCA was all about as he, as he became older and started forming OIC. The first memory I have of my, with my dad related to the Greater Providence YMCA was an in-town um, YMCA was um, right there on the corner of Broad. And I remember, um, I remember knowing that they provided housing 
dad was very much a huge part of the housing um, in Providence. He was always about the needs of the community, the needs of the people. Um, just like the Greater Providence YMCA is, it's about the needs of the community and the needs of the people. My dad would be humbled and honored to be a recipient of the Y Hero Award. And he would feel so honored because he definitely believed in, you know, the Greater Providence YMCA's mission and what they do. I think it's really important for the people to support the uh, YMCA because of all the resources and um, that they're able to provide. I think just knowing that these resources can continue on for, for years as long as they donate and provide, but they're donating to a good cause, they're donating to an organization that's trusted, and donating to knowing that they're helping their community. And you can see why Mike was so loved. Jill, thank you very much. If you'd like to make a donation in memory of Mike or any of our honorees, or maybe someone in your life, you know, we. We come to a point where there are birthdays, anniversaries, you know, holidays. We're always wondering, you know, what do we get that person in our life? They have everything. We don't know what to get. How about a donation in their name to the YMCA of Greater Providence? You can go to ymcaheroes.org to donate. And if you're making a donation and you'd like to dedicate it to someone, please put their name on there as well. And of course, we appreciate that. And thank you very much. Our next hero is Kathy Andriosi. Kathy is a motivational speaker, highway safety advocate, and president of the Tory Lynn Andriosi Foundation. The foundation was created in 2003 after her then 12 year old daughter, Tori Lynn, was struck by a hit and run drunk driver that left her paralyzed. Since then, Kathy has dedicated her life assisting families impacted by a traumatic, life altering event. In her role as president of the Tory Lynn Andriosi Foundation, Kathy collaborated with the Greater Providence YMCA to co-host and share the inaugural Dancing Under the Stars Gala. The proceeds raised from the event was used to purchase and maintain functional electric stimulation bike, which is known as the Fez bike. By the way, there is one in every Y location. Tori uses that one at the Newman location. And uh, she's been an integral piece of Tori Lynn's therapy, and she has been there for her daughter, all, all along the way. Kathy is the most dedicated parent, advocate, and friend you will ever meet. She's willingly to jump in and help whenever the why asks, from distributing toys at Christmas time to packaging food to people in our community. We wanna say congratulations to Kathy. My name is Kathy Andriosi. And at 12 years old, my daughter Tori, while a pedestrian, was struck and gravely injured by a hit and run drunk driver. Tori had lived in a quadriplegic and a minimally conscious state, so movement wasn't something that was available to her. I started to investigate any, anything that could help improve that scenario. And further research, showed me that there was a state-of-the-art piece of equipment, a therapeutic device that was used in major institutions across the country. It was something called a Fez bike. And the wonderful thing about this discovery and about this bike was that we would be able to access it, not through being an inpatient at some major rehabilitation hospital, but we would be able to access it merely for the price of membership, a membership with the Greater Providence YMCA. We traveled to uh, Seekonk, Massachusetts twice a week to utilize that bike, and Tori thrived and her condition improved. Knowing that Tori was someone who always liked to level the playing field, that's when we first became active in trying to secure more of those bikes so that more people would be able to benefit from the same things that Tori was able to benefit from. And that led us to things like Dancing Under the Stars. And that was a wonderful fundraiser where we collaborated with the Y and with the Fred Astaire Dance Studios and partnered professionals with community leaders to raise money 
and through the efforts of those fundraisers, three Fez bikes were brought to the state of Rhode Island in different Y facilities. For the Y to be able to meet the ever-changing needs of all members of the community, it needs resources. Those resources come in volunteers or helping hands. Those come in the way of people purchasing memberships, you know, to be a member. But it also comes from donations from caring individuals. I was incredibly surprised and humbled when I found out that I was going to be recognized as one of the Y heroes. We can all use a helping hand from time to time. And to think that the efforts that we've been making in my daughter's name, um, it means a lot. Kathy, well-deserved, and congratulations. You heard Kathy talking about the need for more Fez bikes or just donations in general to the Y. So that's ymcaheroes.org. That is the website to go to, ymcaheroes.org. If you'd like to make a uh, donation, you can make it in uh, Tori Lynn's uh, member, uh, in honor as she continues to use the YMCA, their family, or anybody in your family that you would like to do that. So that is ymcaheroes.org. Our next hero is a decorated Naval officer, Dr. William Bundy, who was the first of many things in his life. Native of Baltimore, Maryland, he was the first African-American to play lacrosse at Baltimore City College and joined the Navy-sponsored Sea Cadets and later enlisted in the Navy. His 30-year Naval career is legendary. He was a member of the Centennial Seven, one of the first seven African-Americans to command a submarine in the first 100 years of the U.S. submarine force. Incredible. Achieved the rank of chief sonar tech, uh, technician, was also the director of the Naval Officer Candidate School in Newport. After Dr. Bundy retired from active duty, he entered the public service sector, eventually becoming the director of the Rhode Island Department of Transportation before returning to the Naval War College to serve as chair of the Warfare Analysis and Research Department and ultimately as associate provost. Dr. Bundy was also instrumental in the development of youth lacrosse in Rhode Island. He served on the Rhode Island Youth Lacrosse Board of Directors for over 10 years and was a member of the Greater Providence YMCA Board of Directors from 2016 to 2019. He was committed to a goal of establishing a Y in the urban core. Dr. Bundy passed away in 2019 we remember him today, we will never forget him, accepting his award as his son, Will. My name is William Bundy Jr. I'm the son of William Bundy, one of the Y Heroes Award recipients this year. I'm here on his behalf because unfortunately my father passed away in December of 2019. I am beyond honored on his behalf to um, help give, articulate his story and I'll give you some context to his life. My father was the first African-American to rise from the enlisted ranks inside the Navy up to command a submarine. And he did so not coming necessarily coming from the easiest of circumstances. Despite the systems of oppression inside of America, um, he was able to kind of overcome all of that through organizations like the YMCA. Looking from where he came to where he ended up, I mean, it's, it's revolutionary. He was able to establish Nothing short of like, I, I don't even want to quote numbers, but you know, hundreds of mentor, mentees and uh, the impact that he has had on those individuals' lives is, is tremendous and cannot necessarily be replicated. And all of that comes from organizations like the YMCA, the Sea Cadets and others that my father took advantage of and gave him that next step up that he another, otherwise might not have had. Uh, my father was one of the more humble people that you'd ever meet. And so he never really looked for attention. Um, now, attention always came to him because he was just a very capable and charismatic person. He would be beyond honored. He would be honored and humbled that you were you were recognizing him with this um, with, with this award. You know, it's unfortunate that he's not here uh, to receive it in person. Just realize that my father's spirit is with us, and um, he would be pleasantly surprised. He'd have a big smile on his face. The YMCA provides services to so many youth um, and so many um, people that are in riskier situations, right? Um, the extent that you can open up your pocket 
right, both in terms of treasure and time, um, would be greatly appreciated for an organization like the YMCA. It's also about the mission of the YMCA and its ability to influence and impact young people's lives in our community. Um, and so I think it's one of the most worthwhile investments that my, personally my wife and I make. Um, and I know that my father felt the same way. Will, thank you. And I think he summed it up best has one life can touch so many people and Dr. Bundy touched so many people over his life. So we recognize him today and we thank him for everything that he did. Uh, you heard Will talking about making a donation to the Y. We'll throw that out again for you. YMCAheroes.org. If you'd like to make a donation in someone's memory, Dr. Bundy's memory or anyone in your life, it's YMCAheroes.org. Finally, our last honoree tonight is, or this afternoon, is Lori White. Lori is president of the Greater Providence Chamber of Commerce, Rhode Island's largest private sector business and economic development organization. She's also chief executive of the Greater Providence Chamber Foundation, which serves the private sector in generating new business investment in the state of Rhode Island. Lori is an honors graduate from the University of Rhode Island, and was a recipient of the university's Dean's Distinguished Achievement Award in October of 2010, and the University President's Distinguished Achievement Award in October of 2016. Lori founded the Terracani Lecture Series on First Amendment Rights at URI in June of 2019 in honor of her late husband, journalist Jim Terracani. In recognizing and in recognition of her advocacy work in support of education, she was inducted into the Community College of Rhode Island Hall of Fame in April of 2010 and received an honorary doctorate in business administration from Johnson & Wales University in May of 2010. She was inducted into the Prop Schools Hall of Fame in October of 2008. Lori is a former board member of the Greater Providence YMCA and a longtime supporter of the Y's mission. She was instrumental in the strategic plan to build a Y accessible to all in the urban core in the city, initiative that is key to her vision on how the city goes the state will go. Lori has opened many doors for the Y and continues to be an advocate in the community. Congratulations, Lori. My name is Lori White and I'm the president of the Greater Providence Chamber of Commerce. And I am here today to talk about what it means to be part of the Greater Providence YMCA family and to be part of the Why Heroes celebration. It's very important that the Greater Providence YMCA have a very strong and visible presence in Providence, in the neighborhoods, in the urban core whether it be from a public education perspective, uh, a family enrichment perspective, um, from a food insecurity perspective, and to bring these resources right into the neighborhoods and to be able to meet people where they are. During my time on the board, I was really pleased to be part of the initiative to expand Camp Fuller and how we might make Camp Fuller more accessible to some of the families in the urban area, uh, many of whom hadn't had the opportunity to even know that Camp Fuller was a place that they could go for camping and recreation and healthy living and learning life skills and mentoring opportunities. Lots of generations of Rhode Island families have enjoyed part of the summer at Camp Fuller and being able to open it up to a wider audience is very rewarding. And I often say from my role as president of the Greater Providence Chamber of Commerce is that so goes Providence, so goes the state. And we all as Rhode Island citizens need to care about what's happening in our urban core, the capital city of our state. Being chosen as a Y hero is a very humbling experience. So I'm very honored uh, to be recognized 
by the Greater Providence YMCA on behalf of uh, the Greater Providence Chamber of Commerce and all of the members of the chamber that um, collectively uh, joined together with lots of organizations, including the Y, to make our state a better place. The leadership um, exhibited by Steve O'Donnell and his very, very talented and caring staff are folks that are going to lead the Y into the next generation of greatness. And it's really important that all of us uh, understand and, and respond to the call that we are a community of people that come together to support one another. And I can't think of a better organization that exemplifies that. Lori, well-deserved and congratulations, Colonel O'Donnell. I know you're close friends with Lori and you were with uh, Jim Terracani and obviously the impact he made in the state of Rhode Island, just not in the journalism or a TV industry, but he, what he meant to the community and Lori continues that today. No, absolutely. And, you know, shout out to Jim, um, lifelong, iconic, uh, lost a battle with the toughest, toughest person you ever met. Um, and Lori, you know, thank you very much for serving on our board to help us to, in the direction we're going in right now. Uh, YMCAheroes.org. If you'd like to make a donation, we want to thank Will Bundy for uh, donating $500 in the memory of his dad. So you can do that too if you'd like to donate uh, some money in memory of a loved one. Before we talk to Colonel O'Donnell, we do want to say thank you to our, the rest of our platinum sponsors, the New England Laborers Health and Safety Fund and Labor Management Corporation Trust and also the New York State Laborers Health and Safety Trust Fund and Employers Corporation and Education Fund. I think, Colonel, what we should really kind of talk about, and you mentioned it at the beginning, I think when people think YMCA, first thing they think about is a swimming pool. Next thing they think about, you know, is a gym. And if you come here to Kent County, it's beautiful, but it's much more than that. It is. I think that's what we want to tell our audience, that is the gym and swim is what we have. It's certainly the mainstay. You walk in. Swim is for healthy, gym, um, gym, cardio, weight training, basketball, you name it. But here on this whole complex is 115 acres. We have childcare in the back. We have summer camp and we want to mention that um, the summer camp is such, uh, 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 it's an icon. Well, we're open for business with pre-COVID or post-COVID, I guess we are now, we're getting there. Camps are open up, we're working with the state to get more people here to underwrite sponsorships and scholarships for kids to come here. So Kent County is one of many Y's you can go to. Summer camp is happening. So bring your kids, give you a chance to get a break, but give them a chance to get out in the wilderness. Again, this is 115 acres, if you look at it, of beautiful, beautiful property. Get your kids here. I remember at one of our board meetings, it was brought up and it was kind of amazing because I never really thought about it. It was brought up that there are some kids in, you know, cities like Providence, Pawtucket, Woonsocket, they've never been in the woods and played in the woods, let alone go to camp. So this would really mean a lot to them. Absolutely. It's life changing. We have people on our board. We have people that work here that went to camp and saw the world from a whole different perspective. So I'm getting them out of the urban core, mixing different communities together. That's what we're supposed to be doing. That's our responsibility as adults. And so come out and join us. It's the best way to describe it. But there's a cost to everything. And it sounds kind of strange asking people for money, but to run places like this is a nonprofit organization. It's important that the money that you donate takes care of children and some children for no fault of their own and families for no fault of their own fall into um, different traps, especially with COVID. It was so much poverty and so much food inequity that we've seen in the last several months. And that's what we've done. We've pivoted and everybody uses that word kind of as a punchline, but that's exactly what happened here. We utilized our fleet. Um, we transported kids to school and we got paid to do that. We rented our facilities. We got paid to do that. In addition to our membership, which our membership base dropped substantially because of COVID. So we're open today. When you come into the Y, you see people happy and smiling. Some people still wearing masks. I guess we all have to still wear masks, but it seems to be we're coming out of it. So please come out to your local YMCAs, um, come back. Your membership matters and not just matters the financial piece, the piece is the community piece where you're talking to other people. You can't put a price tag on it. The mental health piece, you need to come out and communicate with people. That's what the YMCO is for. And it's for everybody. All right. So I mentioned this earlier when we, when we started the event today. As coming in, I met this woman who's been a longtime member of the YMCA. She obviously was touting and how beautiful it is. She talked about her grandchildren come here. Her entire family comes here. She even called to make sure that 
you know, places like the Y could reopen. And I asked her, you know, I know it's beautiful, but what, why do you really love this? And she kind of talked about what you just said, uh, the mental health aspect of it. It's a chance for her. She works at Kent County Hospital. She has seen the worst of the worst in COVID. It was her chance to, you know, break away for an hour or two, exercise, hang out with some friends. You know, sometimes you can't really put a price tag on that. You cannot. And I, I met with the same woman in the hallway and she was great. And she said that I reached out, this is her speaking, to the governor directly, you cannot close these places. Now we understand why it closed and all that, but once they reopened and people have some hesitancy, so please come back. The building is open of the major capacity, the large facilities. Again, the mental health piece is so much more important where you can talk to somebody. And I get it, we'll say, you can lift, you can run, you can do what you gotta do, but the interaction with other people is epic. And now with the fitness, everybody's buying different gear, uh, pieces of equipment for home. We even rented our equipment out during COVID. But the key to a YMCA success is people physically come into your community. Uh, if you'd like to make a donation, ymcaheroes.org. That's ymcaheroes.org. You know, uh, really one of the missions uh, is the urban core and making sure we have a presence in the city of Providence and putting a new YMCA. I remember the first day, uh, that I was on the board that was really dominated the conversation. And so many people knew that that's where the YMCA needs to go. So Colonel, you know, for people watching and wanting to donate, why is that important to get a Y back in the city of Providence? I think you heard it from several of the heroes and people on our board. As the city of Providence goes, the state of Ireland goes. If you like that or not, that's a fact. That's a reality. I've learned that from state government. I know it from here. It doesn't mean we're going to leave all the other um, wise apart, but the urban core is what everybody I've met in the Y today grew up in Providence and they've moved into the suburban areas. So it's important that we give back to those who are less fortunate than we are. That's part of our mission. And that's been the driving force for you as the board's been driving force for me. Um, we're gonna keep doing that. We have a lot of different conversations going on with city leaders about getting a location in the city and then building you know, a major Y similar to the in-town Y, which is now Crossroads that you referred to. So we can service those people. And when those, serve, those people can take advantage of it, we wanna make sure we take care of other ethnic groups that sometimes get left aside. So. Um, the why is for all, but the state of Rhode Island needs to be all, but all starts in the urban court. You know, the head of the family court was telling me one day, uh, Judge Faye, he said, you know, you better get, I see these kids. I see this, these families, they come in front of me. You know, we got to get them off the streets. We got to get them to do something. And by doing this, this mission will help that. No question. And we made a huge commitment uh, many years ago, as you know, from the board. Kobe Dennis came in as an employee for diversity, inclusion and equity. And with that hire is we, as Kobe mentioned earlier, we got to if we're going to talk the talk, we better walk the walk. So we're slowly grinding to get there. But again, it goes to donations. And I'd like to mention text to messages. I know everybody talks about donating through text. So 41444, you can donate and also, you know, the other avenues to donate to the Y. So what's the message as we're wrapping up here? The, the message is the Y is here. It's active. Thank you to the members who stayed during COVID. Um, some of them paid for memberships when we were closed. Some of them paid for virtual memberships, but we want you back. We want you to come back in here, enjoy the facilities, but also the mental health, mental health aspect is critical. And the last message is camp. Get your kids out here. Um, give you a break from them. Um, I mean that respectfully, <laughs> but you need it. Get them out here and enjoy the woods. Get them out where they're doing different things. And camp is fun. There's so much activity and there's also learning. I mean, it's not just book learning. It's the learning they're going to learn from other people and other children. So um, please help us be successful, successful camp season. But you can donate. And donation is the best way to help us. Colonel, there will be some kids that will say, I need a break from my parents, too. So it probably, it probably goes both ways. Sure. Uh, so we want to thank you for watching. Again, we want to congratulate all our honorees. If you really look at them, they're from all walks of life. But there's one clear theme for all six is how much they love the state of Rhode Island, how much they gave back to the state of Rhode Island and how they want to improve this state. It's true and, and nobody's more important than others, but I do have to mention Amon Sabatoni and the Cardi brothers, um, what they've done beyond, it's, it's just unbelievable. Um, if you pick up the phone and call Amon and his staff, some of them I've known for a lifetime, they're here and they'll dig and they grind and they work hard. And it's just unbelievable to watch that happen. And also what we'd like to do is get kids into the trades. 
teach kids. They have programs for that. Um, they have the laborers training up in Parford, Connecticut. And for the Cotties, everywhere we go is the Cotties. And I, I respect the heck out of them all. And the rest of our Y heroes, thank you from the bottom of our heart. Um, from Will to the Van Leeson family, to Kathy, to Lori White. It's just really unbelievable. I'm humbled from watching and listening to all that background. So thank you. Great stories. Again, ymcaheroes.org. If you'd like to take a tour of the YMCA and see what it's all about, maybe a YMCA that's near your house, obviously, you can do that too. For Colonel O'Donnell, I'm Mike Montecalvo from WPRI 12 and Fox Providence. Thank you very much for being so generous over the years, so generous today. Thank you for watching and we hope to see you soon. Thank you.